Uh, so this is a very uh, uh, common question, a question that every single practicing Muslim uh, faces as soon as they begin practicing, and that is what is to be done with all of these different madhabs out there. So realize, my dear brother, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish a lay Muslim for being a Hanafi or non-Hanafi or being a Shafi'i or a Maliki or a Ghair Muqallid or Ahl Hadith. Allah Azza wa Jal will not punish a person for following a legal school that he thought was a valid school. These are not the issues that we should be dividing ourselves over. Whether to say Ameen out loud or not, whether to raise the hands or not, every one of these positions you will find evidence from the Sahaba and Tabi'oon. In theory, one can say that the average Muslim is not qualified to go back to the Quran and Sunnah directly and needs a tutor or needs a mentor or needs a scholar or a guide. So let me give you an example. I am not a medical doctor. So when I am sick or when a loved one is sick, what do I do? I don't just open up the books of medicine and then I tell the person take this medicine or I tell myself to take this medicine. I go to somebody who has trained in the sciences, who has trained in medicine and then I ask their advice. Similarly, the one who does not have an Islamic training, he or she must go to a scholar and that scholar is therefore considered to be trustworthy in these issues. So, if that scholar follows a madhab, so if your teacher is Hanafi, then alhamdulillah you will stick to the Hanafi madhab. And if that scholar uh, believes that he or she is qualified to research the opinions and then choose an opinion that uh, they feel stronger about, then this is uh, something that is permitted for the alim, for the one who has studied the religion, it is permitted to do. And for you as a lay person, you are allowed to follow this alim. So, the bottom line, your job is to find the scholar that is accessible to you, that you trust the most in his sincerity, and that you feel is the most knowledgeable. These are the three simple conditions. There has to be access to number one. Number two, that you feel is a genuine muttaqi. Now you have no way of knowing this, but you will judge. Is he praying regularly? Do you find him to be a person who avoids the haram? He lives a halal life? So this is a muttaqi. And then number three, that you feel him to be genuinely knowledgeable of the sharia. Once you find somebody of this nature, then the legal madhabs or the legal schools of law or the legal questions, this is not now your business to say, where did you get it from and what is your evidence? Just like you do not question the doctor when the doctor writes a prescription for you, you trust the training of the doctor. But before you walk into his office, you have to make sure where has he studied? Does he have qualifications? Does he have a positive reputation? This is what is known. Once you know that, okay, this is a doctor, the whole community trusts his medicine. He has a stellar record. He has a good track record. Similarly, there are scholars there. They have good track records and you will find your scholar and you will then stick with that scholar and that scholar then he may either follow a madhab he may give you his own opinion فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. 